Yeah. Oh, my God. Right in the feels. Yeah. Right off the bat. Oh, boy. I think this is one of my favorite Selena songs. Yeah, it is. Because uh, it's actually a Pretender song. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. Uh, what's the name of the Pretender song? Um, I forgot. Back on the Chain Gang. Yeah, back on the Chain Gang. Back on the uh, Chain Gang. I had a brain fart there. I never, <laughs> I never told you this, but I got on stage with Selena. You did? Because she was at uh, the Roadhouse in San Bene. Oh, your hometown. And she goes, I need someone. Because she did that song where she tells off the guy. Yeah. What's the name of that song? Where tu she, que creías. Right. She goes, I need someone so that I can sing this song to. And she goes, but I'm not going to pick any of you guys if you're drunk. Of course, it's San Benito. They're all like plastered. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I purposely stood in a little area where it was like, you know, vacant. And I tried to look innocent. And then she goes, okay, how about you? And then I got on stage, and then she sang the song, oh, like, yeah. Get creas. And then she was like, give me a round of applause. And so that was my little Selena moment. Wow. She was very. Yeah. I never yeah. knew that about Chaz, babe. I yeah, I well, wow. I, you know, it's uh, one of those San Benito things that happened, and it's uh, chalk it up in the bucket list. Thank you, Selena. Yeah, well, that's pretty interesting, man. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. I wish we had phones back then. I know. I know. There was no phones. There wasn't oh. anything. And I was a lot thinner, too. Well, somebody probably has like a, uh, one of those throwaway cameras that has they haven't Disposable? developed. Yeah, they haven't Disposable. developed Disposable. it. You know, because you would take pictures with those and develop them like two years later and stuff. Right. Yeah. And they'd be like, wow, I don't even remember being this thin. <laughs> yeah. Like so far, so long ago. And having this much hair. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rock and Chaz show. It is a Wednesday night. Straight from the Society 204 co-working community, situated in the heart of Edinburgh's historic downtown district, our space is ready to accommodate businesses of all size with a, sizes with a creative blending of 21st century amenities. Look at that place. It is absolutely beautiful. That lobby, uh, we've got a bar, we've got a kitchen, we've got restrooms, we've got office space. You would never know this was a J.C. Penney's in the 1970s. You, you wouldn't, man. You would never know that. And uh, Nick Cantu and his family and his uh, employees and Renee, uh, who handles uh, every day-to-day -day, uh, stuff here, uh, they're just doing a fantastic job. You give them a call, 956-887-1143, and book a tour. And we want to say hello to our new neighbor, Pet Rep Shop. Right? Is that what it says? Let's see what it says here. I need glasses. It's the rep shop. Yeah. Rep shop. Store. And what do they what does the rep shop do? They have it's like a little boutique. It's a little boutique. It's yeah. the cutest little boutique. Yeah, yes. you go in there and she's got clothing and she's mm -hmm. got little knickknacks and stuff Snacks, like that. Stuff like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean it's like, wow, man, it's really awesome. So Super we want to say, say hi to her. And uh yesterday it's like there was more people than usual when we came in with, yes. with like, like if they knew Chris, Chris Perez was coming here. in yeah. or something. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Maybe, no maybe. Wonder. That's what we think. No, dude. And then, and then. No, uh, it makes sense. The yeah. day I walked into her <laughs> boutique and I said, hey, give me a card so I can send you a shout out. She goes, well, it would have been cool if you would have introduced us to Chris Perez. Oh, All right, guys. Oh, oh, like that. Everybody oh. wants to meet Chris Perez. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't blame him. <laughs> and I told I told her, look, I, he, you should have just came out and said hi. Yeah. He's real approachable. Yeah, he, very, he is. He and because I'm not going to walk in and say, hey, Chris Bettis is here. You know, I can't do that. No, you know what no, I'm saying? No, no, no. So, you know, but uh, next time, and it's not the last time he'll be here. He'll be mm -hmm. here again. And so we want to let, and everybody, by the way, if you were watching the show live last night and then found out later on in the evening, you try to watch it, it got blocked by YouTube. But it is up already again. And uh, I was surprised that Chaz told me he actually got teary-eyed during the mm -hmm. interview. Because yeah, yes. there was a few a great moments. We had a lot of peaks and valleys. And, you know, there was uh, laughter and there was, uh, you know, seriousness. But it was the, the moment when we were talking about, you know, um, Chris realizing, you know, that, you know, his self-worth as well. And knowing that he's, you know, got his own legacy to build, uh, even though it was, you know, Selena was part of it and it was, yeah. under, she was under her shadow. You know? He had that epiphany yeah. when he said, you know what? Someone had told him, hey, there would be no Selena movie if there wasn't a love story. Damn, and I was just going to tell everybody, you need to go to find out what the deal oh! was. And this guy. But no, this but guy, wait a minute. Get more views. <laughs> and now they don't have that's to. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. But there's so many more reasons to watch that episode. <laughs> yeah, it is. But you have to see because he says a lot more about that. He so, does. He does. So go to, uh, go to last night's show and check it out and view it and share it with everybody. It was a fantastic show. And we want to thank Chris and Carlito for stopping by. And I don't remember a time when we had so many, a, a week like of people that are connected to Selena. It's Selena you week. Know? And mm -hmm. tonight, ladies and gentlemen, 
we have Becky Lee Meza with us. How you doing, Becky? I'm good. Yeah. yeah. And she brought her, uh, I don't know, is it worse half or better half? What do they call My the better husband? Half. Better a better half? <laughs> we want to thank David for coming by. And, uh, of course, uh, we want to uh, want to say hello to David, man. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you guys. So how does it feel being married to a movie star, dude? Pretty cool. Pretty cool? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I saw David on... Um, <laughs> Sabado Gigante, right? Yeah. You were in that episode because Becky was there. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah. you've lost some weight since that time, yeah. haven't you? Congratulations yeah. on the weight loss. Yeah. And man. coming out on Sabado Gigante. What is your secret to weight loss? What is your trick? Chasing kids around. Uh, you're, chasing you're, you're chasing kids around. Uh, chasing kids around. Okay, there we go. Yeah. You're, you're kind of quiet. You got a little nervous or something, man. Are you all right? All right. You'll be, you'll be cool. Ladies and gentlemen, and we've got Jax Phoenix and that other end over there. He's yeah. going to be taking care of the chat zone tonight. What's going on, Jax? What's going on, people? My name is Jax Phoenix. You already know this. And, well, I'm excited to have little Selena in the studio yeah, tonight. Yeah. And, well, you already know I'm going to be handling the chat zone and all the questions, comments. If you have any questions for our guests, feel free to ask us in the chat zone. The more you interact, the more of a chance you have to to come out in, a, in the show and get a shout out. So um, also don't forget to like, share and subscribe the show. Thank you so much for joining us and let's get active on the chat zone. And I Ooh, love that wow. hot pink shirt you got. Thank you. Yeah, man. It's very, uh, very 80s. Yeah, bro. Very. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it 80s. You know, I, I love that era. Like I'm listening to nothing but Monty Crew and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. like, He's got blonde hair. Yeah, yeah. A little bit left. I got a little bit left. Yeah. My birthday is in July and I usually every every birthday I dye it back blonde again so uh, that's the metaphor of the phoenix that's why I'm Jack's phoenix yeah. every year the phoenix is reborn Rises. Yeah. yeah sir that's Woo. exactly well <laughs> next time uh, you know when you get close to your birthday just go up to curl up and die over there and yes uh, <laughs> that's that's Becky Lee Meza's uh, is it what's your last name now can we call you Becky Lee Meza is that it's, cool it's burden it's burden burden okay Becky Lee burden right how do you oh, spell that that's good B-U-R-D-E-N. Like, like, like a burden. I'll never be <laughs> your beast of burden. burden. Yeah. Never heard that. <laughs> All right. Becky Lee Meza Burden. Can we say yeah. that? All right. Yeah, okay, sure. cool. All That's right. Good. Before we <laughs> went on the air, we were talking about curl up and die. What is the origin of the of your of the place? Now I thought it was from the movie Sweet Home Alabama, but is that wrong or okay, what? So last time that I was on the show, I said my, my favorite movie was Sweet Home Alabama. Wow. I have lots of favorite movies, just in case. Every time there's a love movie, I always say, oh, this is my favorite. Everyone shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, um, her friend had a salon and it was Curl Up and Die Beauty Parlor. Oh. And so I just always loved the name and... I like it. So, yeah. ladies, Snazzy. and where is this uh, beauty salon located in Primera, right? It's, it's in Harlingen. In Harlingen? Yeah. Okay. Well, let us know where so they can go. Um, so, we're off Stewart Place Road. Okay. We are by appointment only with the whole COVID thing. Mm -hmm. We kind of just wanted to limit the the amount of people in the shop and just keep everyone safe and comfortable and, and feeling good. So, we do by appointments only, but there's only four stylists. It's small. It's like 800 and something square feet. So, yeah. we try and keep it intimate. You know, there's lots of big salons, and sometimes you just, I don't know, you just want a cozy smile. Are you physically place. cutting hair, or are you supervising? Oh, no, no, no. I do hair. All right. I oh. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My mom was a hairstylist, and I always loved it. Mm -hmm. So. Wouldn't that be the greatest hairstylist to have? To say, yeah. Becky Lee Mesa is my hairstylist. Yeah. Most of my clients don't know who I am, and I, I kind of like it that way, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I want them to respect me for my craft and not because I'm. Well, I mean, they, they can, can respect they you for both. both. Yeah, I, I mean, know, but yeah. you know, like if I knew that, I don't know. Don't you know and realize that you were part of like history? Yeah. You're, you're yeah. like you're a you're a I cultural know. Uh, you know pr a person that has. Uh, a cultural impact uh, with uh, what you did and and we'll talk about that in a bit but she had to you know audition with like hundreds of other little mm -hmm. girls that yeah. wanted to be in the movie as well so but we'll get to that in a Good bit job. we gotta introduce our producer as well Woo! yeah, yeah. Hey we've got uh, rally here hello hello on, i want to send a special thank you to rollo and ben from grupo solido yeah. for the t-shirt yeah I'm oh it. they're yeah. cool they're cool so dudes. thank you guys so much and welcome both of y'all to our show yeah and we've got chaz man he comes today. What's up? What's going on, Chad? Here we are, season three yeah. of the Rock and Chaz show, Woo! longest running <laughs> show on PVT. 
I am full-time psychology professor, part-time sociology professor, and yes, full-time aphrodisiac <laughs> in the studios. Great to be here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason he's a full-time aphrodisiac is because he is a client. <laughs> you can't say it, but you know what he means. Of Dr. T's <laughs> primary care for men. Oh my God. How do you he, say that word, man? Dr. T's primary care for men and women. <laughs> If uh, you feel <laughs> sluggish like uh, he did, tired, gain weight, and you're looking for a primary care clinic to help improve your quality of life, Dr. T's primary care for men and women. They handle your primary care needs. They'll help you lose weight, get you feeling younger and healthier again. You can call them at 1-855-771-1650 or 956-441-2188 or go to www.drtees.com. I said it right. Last night I said doctorts.com. Yeah, you and, did uh, say that. I'm like, what? <laughs> Learn about hormone replacement therapy, weight loss therapy, Therapy, IV vitamin infusion mm -hmm. and peptide therapy, all designed to help you feel great and healthy again. I was talking to Bobby Polito. He was a little bit under the weather. Mm -hmm. He's had a, he had a grueling schedule. I told I him, dude, imagine. go to Doctor Teeth, get an IV vitamin, vitamin infusion, infusion yeah. and and boost your immune system. I just talked to uh, Jesse Turner a little bit before we were mm -hmm. coming to work, and he was like, man, dude, I'm so, so exhausted. And I was like, dude, go get an IV. And well, uh, check this out. I yeah. went today. Here's Woo! one shot right here. Oh. Boom, one shot. And then the other shot. Yeah. Right here. Well, check this out, dude. Check this uh -oh. out. Hey! Check it out. Hey! Oh. Dude, Double got, shot. <laughs> <laughs> I got one on each yeah. naga today, man. We got dude. a free show tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Full moon. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we look a little more swole than uh, your usual, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. my God. Dr. Teach Primary Care in McAllen and Harlingen. All right. And, that's and for our, women, too. Yeah, that's yes. where our guest is from. So, Becky, how you been? Good. Good. Yes. How have you been? Yeah, good. Good. And uh, just uh, really happy that you got to come down here and uh, hang out at our studios because the last time we did an interview, mm -hmm. it was over the phone and it was awesome. But there's nothing like having the real person inside the studio, right? Yes. Yeah. So I've got a few uh, clips that I wanted to put up. I guess we'll put the first one up. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen the movie Selena, we're going to show you a clip. And this is her. This is Becky Lee when she was, uh, boy, about eight years old, something like that. Let's check it out. Come on, Dad, please. What? I want to go outside and play. Come on, just for a second. Give me a minute, right? Here, look at this. What's this? It's a song in Spanish. But I don't know Spanish. Say that word, relo. Relo. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and then blow her out. <laughs> Did you feel it? Do it again. <laughs> Say that word, relo. Relo. <laughs> Perfect. No. Wow. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> what, like... I freak out when I see that. I mean, how how was it doing? And how many takes did you have to do? And did you, I mean, being in front of a guy like Edward James Olmos. Did you know who he was? No, not at all. I think it helps when when you're that young, um, you're that uh, naive. Y yeah, y you know, like my parents knew who he was. My aunts and uncles. I remember when I got the part in the movie. We all sat down at my uncle's house and we watched Mi Familia. Because Constance was in it, Edward was in it, Jennifer Lopez was in it, uh, Jacob Vargas was in it. Um, and it was a movie that they had done that was also directed by Gregory Nava. And so just to kind of give me a feel of who I was going to be working with, they sat us down to watch the movie. There's uh, an inappropriate scene. So I guess like us kids were just like, yeah, this is an adult movie. So we just like walked out, me and all my cousins, because we all sat down as a family and my family is huge. Um, and by the way, my family's from San Benito as well. Yeah! So wow. I just thought I'd throw that out Another there. Another tie to San Benito! <laughs> well, that makes so, it more better. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we say in San Benito, it's more better. So <laughs> my dad and his family, the Mesa family and the Galvan family is from San Benito. And so that's where we were and so i i mean i had seen him but you know as a kid i was more into what was showing at three o'clock you know which was saved by the bell uh fresh prince of bel-air like right. all those shows that were in at that time so i didn't know who he was but i will say this he was probably one of my most favorite actors to get to work with because day one wow. we actually shot the scene and i i still remember this um where I'm hiding in the bushes playing and, and you know, Marcella finds April in the bathtub. That was like one of the first days that we were out there. And prior to that, we, we kind of were taking pictures as a family, you know, stuff that they put up 
throughout the movie, you know, like background pictures and things like that. So we had like a barbecue and, and all in the same day. All of that stuff happened in the same day. But he looked at me and he could tell I was so nervous like I am right now because I have not been in front of a camera in forever. <laughs> and he said, it's just me and you. Don't don't worry about the cameras. Don't worry about the crew. Because remember, it's not just the people holding the camera. You've got a sound person. You've got a producer. There's like 40 people in the room. And as a young kid from the Rio Grande Valley who's never been involved in something mm -hmm. like this, it's intimidating and it's scary. And he just... He just told me, just go with the flow. And if you forget a line, if you get nervous, he's like, I'll save you. And I just was like, oh, my gosh, that was so awesome. So my respect for him is like, wow. How long did it take you to do that? Uh, that, Or how long did it take you to do all your parts? Because you're you're like the first 20 minutes of the movie, something like that, right? Yeah. Something like that. And, and so how long, what was the process? How long did it take to do all that? My part was filmed in nine weeks, but... While they were filming my part, they were also filming Jennifer Lopez's parts as well. Oh. They had two crews. They had a crew that would be in one location, and, and most of the movie was filmed in San Antonio. So you had a crew like across town doing something, and then you had a crew across town filming our scenes. So it was crew one and crew two. And um, so I, I want to say the whole movie took about nine weeks to mm -hmm. film. And then I think we did two weeks in Corpus where we actually filmed two weeks in Corpus. Um, but it just, it, it went by so fast. How challenging was it like for you? You know, you'd never been an actress. You'd never learned how, or knew about remembering scripts and, mm -hmm. you know, and showing sort of certain types of emotion to make it look real and stuff like that. How challenging was it for you? I can't remember it being challenging because you, you got to remember <clears throat> as a young kid, you know, a lot of us kids, when we're that age, we have such a big ima imagination. Mm -hmm. We have some of us imaginary friends and we talk to ourselves and it's very easy to get into character as a kid, you know, because you just have that innocence. You haven't been tainted by the world mm -hmm. or, or anything like that. And so for me, I, I always just had a really big imagination. So I would just tell myself at nine years old, like you're, you're playing, you're playing and yeah. you're getting to be a part of you know, Selena's story, which by the way, I had no intentions of becoming an actress. When, when the, the whole audition process happened, it wasn't like, Oh, I want to go be a celebrity. It was, I want to go and be a part of Selena's whatever has to do with Selena. Yeah. Because I was just such a huge fan at, at nine years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I've mentioned this before. I went to a private school where it was predominantly white kids. Mm. I was one of like five Hispanics in the school. And so for me to see someone like her who is brown skinned, brown eyed, you know, dark hair, who looked like me, that was gorgeous and so successful. She was my I'm talented, my yeah. role model, yeah. my, you know. What so, specifically did you have to do in the audition? Do you remember what you did? So the first audition and I, I, I you know. Rock, you mentioned earlier about there being hundreds. There was actually thousands. Mm -hmm. And and it was not just for my part. It was also for J-Lo's part, right? Mm -hmm. The older Selena. Yeah. It happened in, uh, the auditions took place in San Antonio, Houston, Miami, Florida, Chicago, Illinois, and yeah. Los Angeles, California. And there were 21,000 girls that auditioned in total for both parts. So Damn. the first, wow. yeah, that was a lot, lot of people. Wow. <laughs> Twenty-one thousand. Yeah. That's that's humans yeah. of people. That yeah. was a lot of people. Yeah. So I mean, and every mother wanted their daughter. To of, course. Oh, of course, of course. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. My parents honestly were like, "Oh, don't want to take her. She's not gonna get it. Like, you know, yeah. she's gonna be so disappointed." They were setting themselves up for for you know because uh, so to be pleasantly surprised that yes. they were setting themselves up to be pleasantly surprised. They were wow. Yeah, it was it was crazy. I. I I don't think that they didn't think I had the talent. The thing is that, again, you know, you had, and especially when you heard the lineup of where these auditions were happening, especially when you hear Los Angeles, California, you're mm -hmm. thinking all the childhood actors. Yep. You know, what are the odds that someone from the Rio Grande Valley that has no experience, yeah. no coaching, you know? And so my parents just didn't want me to be disappointed. And so I told them, I said, look, just take me. I just want to go. And so I remember we went to, it, it took place in El Mercado uh, in, in San, San Antonio. Antonio. And there were about, I want to say there were 7,000 people at that location that day 
They opened the doors Jeez. at nine in the morning and they went on till 7 p.m. And what they would do is they would shuttle like a hundred people at a time. Mm -hmm. And they had a bunch of round tables set up everywhere. And they had, an, you know, an adult, which I would assume is a part of the casting. Mm -hmm. And um, they would get like 10 little girls around in that table and they would ask us silly questions. What's your favorite color? Where are you from? How old are you? You know, do you have a favorite song? I think what they were trying to do and no parents were allowed back there. They were trying to see who's being coached by their parents, who's natural, who's got whatever yeah. it is that they were looking mm -hmm. for. And I've always been a chatterbox. And so I was just <laughs> like, oh, my favorite color is this. And my favorite song is this. And oh my gosh. And like... You know, just talking to everybody super friendly. That's just always how I've been. Um, and I'll never forget after that, um, I actually saw uh, Jennifer Pena and Los Jets were there. They were performing. They had some entertainment there. So I wanted to go see Jennifer, right, perform because she was hot that time, right? Or she was uh -huh. blowing up and everything. Yeah. And and Marcela was out there. And I, I said, oh, my gosh, mom, it's Marcela. Like, I want to go say hi to Selena's mom. And so I went and I said hi to her. And she grabbed me. And she oh. said, I'm so thankful you're here. A month earlier, because the audition took place in June or July. And actually in May, my parents took me to Corpus to go check out the studio. Because remember, right after Selena passed away, everybody fled mm -hmm. uh, to Corpus. Corpus, yeah. And I wanted to go too, but my parents were like, there's so many people going right now, not now. So we waited till it kind of died down. And I made a little homemade VHS video of me in a Selena shirt singing. And so I took it to her and she actually, and this is just the type of person Marcela is, and this is the type of person Selena was. She actually took me to the back and that whole place, now it's a museum. It was set up very differently. Like you would enter, it was the office. There was a hallway, there was the recording studios. And in the back, I don't know if you remember, I know you do because you went and recorded there. They had like a, like a sala, you know, like a living room and they had a TV and it was just so cozy and stuff. And she took me back there and she watched the video with me. Wow. And wow. I was so nice. embarrassed, but so honored that, that Marcela would even take the time to invite us back, my parents and I, to, to watch that video. And so, uh, you know, that's where Selena totally got her humbleness from her sweetness mm -hmm. and always stopped and made everyone feel like you were the only person in the room. Yeah. And so when I saw her at the auditions, she remembered me and she grabbed me and she took me to meet Gregory Nava and, uh, Robert, Robert McIntosh, who was also one of the casting directors. And she, I remember her saying, this is the little girl that I was telling you all about. Now that doesn't mean that I had, favor it, you, you know or that i had it won uh -huh. but it was just kind of like i still had to prove myself mm -hmm. i went through seven other auditions yeah. i had to do video recordings of myself send those in then i had to do it twice in front of the directors the quintanillas uh ab suzette uh abraham so it's not like i got it from you the still had to do the work oh yeah but yeah, yeah for sure there was a, a, a do you think that that situation with Marcella got you the gig or had a big impact in you being the one selected? I think it may have had selected? a little bit of favor, mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I mean, of course, every kid at that age wants to say that I was like Selena. I was, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I don't want to say that, but, you know, that was definitely something heartwarming and something that I did feel. Maybe there was something about me genuinely. There was a connection. Yeah, something genuine that she saw in me that, and I credit that to my parents because I will say this. I wanted to go to the auditions in a bustier and my parents were like, you're nine, you're auditioning <laughs> yeah. for little Selena. Yeah. Not adult. You don't need to go in a bra. Yeah. And so um, I had to go dress <laughs> like if I was going to school, you know, mm. my mom dressed me up like a little girl, no makeup. You know, I mean, that was I wonder if J-Lo showed up in a bra. Did you think she showed up in a bra? I'm pretty sure she did. She probably in did. A yeah. 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 She probably did. Yeah. Wouldn't y'all like to believe that? Yeah. She probably did that trick, Rock, where she was like, oops, I dropped a quarter. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no. I was going to ask you, is that you in the movie when you're singing over the rainbow, right? Yes. Is that your voice? No, it's not. So there's a long story behind mm. that, but I did not get to sing. I was actually dubbed with Jennifer Pena, um, but... I do know that they were pushing for me to sing because you can, t I mean, I don't know. People that know me can tell like, that's not me singing. Right. But. Did you re you recorded something, didn't I you? I did. Uh, was it Chango Wango? I or? did. Oh is, my is it on, is it on, I've is it on YouTube? Jesus. I'm I'm looking looking was it like a kid's album? Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know what they were trying to do with that album. Chango I Wango? I was definitely not, uh, I mean, it was fun at the time, but I look back and think, 
Jennifer Pena was like singing love songs and she was only like two years older than me and yeah. she looked hip and cool in her leather spandex and, right. you know, with the band and I had a monkey. There it like, is. what is up with that? Here it is. For sure. Awesome. Yeah. I that bet, was my nickname I, in high I school. Bet people don't know this. <laughs> this is Becky Lee singing. Oh my God. Here we go. We need more cowbell, more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> you should not be embarrassed with this stuff. This is like, did you sing this at your wedding? No, no. <laughs> I'm thankful there's no video. That's a source subject. Right here, right here. <laughs> David, have you ever heard this song before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she sings it to you all the time? <laughs> My mother-in-law found a box of the CDs. Uh huh. Hey, here's the here's the here's the dude. That that smacks, dude. It's making me want to dance. Yeah. Yeah. It has a cool. Uh, beat. Shoot, uh, I could see uh, this really kicking ass at La Pulga de Alamo, dude. Right? For real, oh, right? Oh my god! Oh, dude, we, the merchandise. I can totally see this in all the Tacuaches trucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. For real. Un remake. Hey, you <laughs> a remake. You asked David, have you heard this song all the way here, dude? <laughs> <laughs> No, she sings it to me every night. <laughs> it was in loop mode. It's yeah. Yeah. Some heavy bass on that. And you I am it. the Chango Wango. You should do the remastered. <laughs> the remastered. And, and add a lead solo with Jax. Dude, right? for real. Uh, David, David, you play guitar, don't you, David? Yeah, not you know, not as much as I'd like to. But, but yeah. you can throw in a solo, bring out the warlock. You can Man. throw in the rhythm and I'll throw in a, a badass solo. The lead. Or, or Jax can do the lead up. solo just like uh, Becky, uh, Becky had to sing uh, the the that song oh, over, the over the rainbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll, we'll, we'll put it in, so we'll sync it together. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, on it's on you. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I would this imagine should be how, every how quinceanera. Uh, was there a was there a dance move to that? Como like el chango, wang, like, you know, like doing like the chango arms know, or something. And I just don't even. Oh, you know. A line dance was, that would have been don't cool. Want to remember, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude? I would be uh, so proud of this, right? I, I mean, like it. I would I be like selling it. changos. I think it's from my website. It was part of an era of an era, Becky. I my mean, brother's you know, dog's you know? name is Chango, it's so, so cringe, I'm gonna play though. this for him. Like, I don't know, just to think well, back. It's, but it, but you were you were a little girl. They were trying to you know. Yeah, You were nine years old. You want they wanted you to you know to tar nine. or to target nine-year-olds and eight-year-olds yeah. and so you know and i'm glad you had the courage to do it yeah. i mean if not we would have never had anything like this to make fun of you know what <laughs> i mean <laughs> i love it i love it and you know what that's i mean honestly i don't regret anything i did and you know people always say i wish Hell i could have no. gone back and done something differently it's totally a part of me i mean yeah. it is what it is yeah. Um, but definitely, it's like, you know, you look back and look at all the 80s hairstyles. Some of them were cool, and some of them were, like, not so cool. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? It's one of those things. Well, you were cool. You Thank were you. cool for doing what you did. Thank you. You man. still are cool. Yeah, you, you still, still are. are. Yeah. And let's go to Jax, man. This is brought by brought to you by mm -hmm. Rody's Country Fried Chicken in Eagle Pass, Texas. I'm sure there's people on the chat zone wanting to ask a question or maybe mm -hmm. send some shout-outs. There's some old-fashioned country cooking since 1985. 36 years of serving Eagle Pass with delicious fried chicken. All the sides, fish and shrimp. Look at that, man. I'm getting hungry <laughs> already. Good and I want to thank uh, Rody Rick, for taking uh, care of Riley Los Gilitos over there in Eagle Pass this past weekend. He took them. That we had pictures. Yes. And we'll, we'll show we'll some show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were there, and Rody's took care of them with one of those big old trays of uh, chicken tenders and french fries and shrimp and gizzards and lemon and that special sauce it is just an amazing 1910 el indio highway eagle pass texas fastest drive through in texas you can call them at 830-773-9189 so Jax, what do you got bro Oh uh, well, as always, the uh, chat zone is on fire. But um, right now we have a couple of shout outs. Well, we're gonna give them a couple of shout outs, and we do have questions for Becky. So first off, we got Pique Guadarrama that is that says, "Please give me a shout out. I am in Huntsville, Texas." So shout out to Pique. I hope he's not in prison there. Hopefully yeah. not. We have a captive audience here. <laughs> <laughs> captive audience. <laughs> And then we got Marcos Flores watching from Lubbock, Texas. All we got right. Daniel Rios from Amarillo, Texas. Felipe Menchaca says, saludos desde La Piedra Redonda, Texas, hey. and puro pinche cowboys and 
PVT Nation, baby. Es todo, papá. Asústame, one time. Carmen Benavides says, hey, Jax, ask Becky if she had trouble learning the washing machine. So we'll get back to that right now. <laughs> we got <laughs> Javier Garcia watching from Shout Out. So he says, Shout Out from Hobbs, New Mexico. So Orale. shout out over there to Hobbs, New Mexico, of course. I hope you're talking it now. I'm just playing. Rico Carrizales, shout out. Jose Z1 Denton County, uh, Texas. He says, County? Is that a jail also? No, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, making a spread. He's making a <laughs> county spread right now, man. Sergio Gonzalez says, what's up, PVT from Kennedy, Texas. Donna Turner says, enjoying your show in Georgia. Thank you all. Oh, nice. Thank Liz you. Liz Radio says, can you ask Becky if she would ever return to acting? And then uh, we had also one uh, a super chat from iLoud14. He really went off in this one. He says, I want to go to her salon all the way from Houston. I'm going to move to the Valley just so she can be my personal <laughs> wow. hairstylist. Is that awesome or what? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, uh, the curl up and die but yeah. beauty salon. Yeah, it's yeah. going to grow and grow exponentially. Yeah. Uh, is, and then they were asking if you actually sang in the movie. So that's another question. Oh, she answered that already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they, they did see that. Uh, I just wrote it down. Uh, did you get? Did you keep... Anything after you finished recording the movie, did you keep any so props or I, anything? I would have like taken that. like the chair from the from the living room or something. And, and you know what? I don't remember if I did or didn't. I mean, the last day was just it was crazy. The last day of filming, it was my tenth birthday. Mm. Oh. And we wow. were filming one of the scenes that did not make it onto the movie where Selena's getting bullied at school. I don't know if y'all have ever seen those. It's on YouTube. Scenes. Yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, Chaz was talking about a deleted yeah. scene that we're, he wanted and to I put up. And I was just ready to get it. home. So I don't think we took anything from set. But that they did not use that scene for several reasons. But one was we did my cake for my birthday during lunch. And I had blue frosting all over my face that we just could not get off. Oh, so they no. could not use that scene. Did you have blue teeth? Yes, uh, yeah. I had like blue teeth. Oh, it was crazy. Wow. And then someone, <laughs> whoever bought that cake, I feel so bad for them. I'm sure they got in so much trouble, but <laughs> can you imagine if we had make it special? If we had cell phones back there, can you imagine I know. back there? Social right. media. So many memories. I know. It's so I think crazy. my dad has so many of those uh, Kodak. Yeah. Film things that he has not developed. Yet. Right, dude, he needs to develop them. Right? I know. Send them to a place now. Yeah, there was another called the 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 photo places. Nah, I'm just like Walgreens, the, yeah. the Walmart Photoshop. There, there, ad. there was another question that you had I mentioned at the oh, very yeah. top. at the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the other question was uh, would I ever okay, act well, again, right? Yeah. No, well, if, you, yeah. if you would want to get back into acting, if, oh, yeah. yes. If you would ever return to acting, and also they are very adamant uh, asking about would you ever have a potential come back uh as a singer they say that you have a very good potential and they would really love a cd from you oh mm. you know what i need to see if my dad has some we do okay let me oh you do <laughs> my dad does um well we want one to put in our I studio know, yeah. you know, we'll have yeah. to bring yeah. some. and it's got to be autographed the yes. oh yeah yeah that's the album that's a cd i think we have I, some casingles of that or cassettes right in the cassette <laughs> uh, casingles i love that casingles <laughs> casingles <laughs> yeah i've never oh heard that before gosh. one song what i is, don't know if i would ever act again um it was fun it's great um but I don't know. I really, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess if the price is right, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> as far as singing. Shit, I'd do it for a Whataburger or something. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I said it. Plebe taco, Dr. Pepper it's, shake. It's and exhausting. Guessing. I mean, listen, think about this. You have to totally mentally focus on this character. Now, I played Selena, which was a, a happy character to play. It was a, you know, again, because I was a huge fan, I got really into it. But... I look at some of these actors and think of the things that they have to go t through to do some of the scenes that they have to do or movies, you know? And I think, my gosh, you know, they have to lose weight, they have to gain weight. Some of them play crazy characters and, and you're just like, so lots of respect to actors. I, I don't think actors yeah. get enough respect for the things that they do. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I. Probably it would be fun. I'm do you sure. have daughters? You have daughters. I have one daughter. Would you let her do what you did? Probably not. Why not? <laughs> Why would you not let her do it but you did it? Okay, so this is gonna get deep. Mm. 
Hollywood's well, full of liberals, right? They do it. Uh, <laughs> well, hold you know, on. Hold here's on. the deal. No, no, no. Let, let's be real. Politics. Look at look at what happened to Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears, yeah. and and you know I've even heard stories of Drew Barrymore, which I I love her. Yeah. Oh well, um, yeah. You she know, had alcohol. And all the she alcohol, was all yeah. that stuff. I mean, it's it's a dark. It can be a dark industry. Yes. It's a lot of adults. <clears throat> You know, you it, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, I just I wouldn't want to put a child through something like that. They would really have to have really disciplined parents. They would have to be very careful with the things that they're subjected to or that they're exposed to, um, because you can go down that slippery slope very fast in Hollywood. Yeah, and uh, it, it's interesting because now you add social media to the whole thing. You know? Exactly. Oh, I, you know, I was bullied are a lot. Cruel, dude. I was bullied a lot. I was beat up in high school. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I. I dropped out of school my sophomore year. Which high school was this? I, oh, Harlingen High. Harlingen. <laughs> no wonder. Oh my gosh. No, but I, I, I went got, to Harlingen High. I got right. beat up a lot. I mean, I was always getting jumped. I was always getting bullied. They were always egging our house, toilet papering our house. They put uh, sugar in my gas tank once. Mm. That's horrible. I mean, I, it was so, the, the you know, back then when you had answering machines, the death threats, the, mm -hmm. uh, um, it was bad. And so I literally dropped out of high school my sophomore year. I went and got my GD because I, I just didn't want to go to school. Wow. Like I hated school. Yeah. I hated it. And and now I look back and I think I wish I wouldn't have given people that satisfaction because I was actually mm -hmm. playing soccer. I played basketball. I played volleyball. Um, I loved being able to be a kid. And I feel that a lot of people robbed me of that. And I let them rob me of it. Was it tied to the Selena movie? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah it was. They jealous. were jealous. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Haters. Definitely. Haters. A lot hate. of people thought that I was rich and that I was snobby. I wasn't. My thing is, I had a guard up. I was very reserved. I didn't know who wanted to be my friend genuinely, or who wanted to be my friend just because, because either I was rich them. and had a big house, or mm -hmm. oh, she's going to pay for everything because she's rich. No. How much you know? money did you make off of that? I think it was like six or nine hundred dollars a day okay. for nine weeks. But yeah. you know, I didn't work seven days straight. Mm. And then a lot of that went in into a trust that I wasn't mm. able to touch. How I much was the trust at the end of the day? Uh it wasn't much. It was like ten grand. Ten grand. It's ten grand. That's well, nine hundred like, bucks a day, and in nine weeks, that's uh, seven days a week. Uh, like five days a week, because I, I would five, get two days. Five off. times nine. That's 40, five. 40, 45 days. 45 times nine. What is it, professor? I don't know. Professor. Someone pull out your phone. I'm yeah. not a later. <laughs> We're I'm a social scientist. Haciendo cuentas. <laughs> yeah, because it's interesting because a lot of people would be, they, they think like just because you had that, you're already rich and you're a, uh, you know, a it's like gas nowadays. But it's, it's like, con right? yeah, it's, if you just redo the roof and the shingles, that's like 10 <laughs> grand right there. Right there. Yeah, I mean, I so know. that's about three ga full, full tanks of gas mm -hmm. right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> With the current presidency. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not much. And so, I, I mean, you know, people. Exactly. I think if they knew, you know, what was really going on or really knew me as a person. In fact, I had one one friend who now is my friend and I love her to death. Uh, she bullied me in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget uh, the principal pulled me aside and he said, why don't you friend her? Try and friend her. And I was like, I'm trying to run from her. Like, why would I friend her? Mm -hmm. And I ended up friending her. And I, I mean, we were inseparable that whole summer. And she's now one of my really good friends. I love her dearly. I see her all the time. And What's her name? Her name's Amy Michelle. Amy Michelle, what's up? Shout and out. So, Shout and, out. You know, but th the thing is that it was a total misunderstanding or, or whatever of who I was as a person. I don't think people gave me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. They saw me in the movie. They thought I was conceited and stuck up. They didn't really get to know me. Um, and I think once people get to know me, and I have another friend, her name's Lorena, and I will throw her under the bus. <laughs> I love her too. Um, we've been really good friends for a long time, but she was a bully to me in high school too. Uh, and once she got to know me, it's like yeah. our kids our kids played soccer together. Like yeah. our, we're friends. A lot of people just never gave me the chance to get to know me. Uh -huh. And once they do, I think they see that I'm just, you know, a down to earth, normal person and just fyi the red lipstick in the selena shirt is because i'm still a huge fan like yeah. that's what got me the part in the movie mm -hmm. and and you know i'm still a huge fan yeah and so it, it's i didn't do any of this because i wanted celebrity status it was she was my idol at the time mm -hmm. i loved her 
I respected her, her music, her artistry, and I still do to this day. You know, she's my dime bag Daryl. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Pantera. Yeah. There you go. That's my husband. Yeah. Husband. I want to be so, in that movie. Wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 dime bag Daryl. You know, Selena has impacted many, many people. Yeah. Uh, and in positive ways, and uh, and and I'm one of them too. You know, yeah. I was part of that era. I was, uh, you know. Uh, most of the interviews on YouTube are me and her, and uh, and everybody says that you know out of all the interviews, it seemed we had a connection, and uh, I think it's because you know we're pretty much uh, you know. So as a kid, do you remember Puro Tejano? Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> it was on Sunday mornings. Well, he was in there. Yes, was of, show, course. Yeah, of course, of <laughs> course, that's what I'm getting to. Uh -huh. So I'll never forget Sunday mornings. We had to be at church at ten, right? St. Benedict's Catholic Church. And I remember when, when I knew that Rock was going to be interviewing Selena, I'd tell my dad, like, today we're, we're not going. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, not today, sorry. <laughs> but when I saw, the for the very first time, the No Me Queda Mas, mm -hmm. when you were doing the behind the scenes and oh, the filming yeah. of it. And I put her on the spot to oh, sing a cappella. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. That is, like, my favorite. That I, was my favorite. And there's so many others. You in the bus. Yeah, I mean, there's... With those crap on my foot. I mean, I was one of those kids <laughs> that would watch Puro Tejano uh -huh. just to watch you interview Selena. Yeah. Like, I was that fan. I wow. was that fan that was watching the show, that was listening to the radio stations, you know, to hear her music. I look. I see that video when I'm when I put her on the spot to sing a cappella, and uh, and and I think to myself, wow, I create, I, I helped create one of the most iconic mm -hmm. off-screen moments, uh, or mm -hmm. you know, behind-the-scenes moments in her history, and I just, I, I can't believe it. I, it's unbelievable to me. I got to know? be there when they were filming uh, the runway um, scene with J Lo there at. Uh, they actually filmed it not in the Alamo Dome, but there was a little place like a convention center next to it. And they, that's where they filmed it. They recreated it. And as a kid, right, my mentality, still a kid. I'm like, where's rock and roll? Like, nah. He should totally be in this scene, <laughs> for sure. I've had people tell me, hey, man, why didn't they put you in right, the little totally cameo? Why didn't they put you in the movie? I said, they couldn't find anybody uh, good, as good looking as the uh, And they couldn't afford the Brad Pitt no estaba. Yeah, he wasn't available for those dates. I love it. I love it. But as a kid, you know, those were the kinds of things that... You know, I was, as a kid and as a fan, I also was, like, really upset that there was no lipstick on the microphone when they were filming the scenes. I was like, that That's was true. huge. As a kid, or the Band-Aid on her broken fingernail from the Alamo mm -hmm. Dome. Mm -hmm. Like, those are little details yeah. that, as a fan, you're right. Yeah. I was, wow. like, when they were filming the movie, I was like, where is all this stuff? You're, I, you're right about the microphone, because I always thought, that looks like a raspa. Because she would sing so close to the mic, it yeah. would get bright red. And yes. And she had big, beautiful lips. Oh, Man, she did. Boy, she was beautiful. She did. Oh, my god. Wow. Gosh. Do you remember the day that she passed on? Do you specific? Because as we're also that are older, we remember, but you were little. Do you remember? I do, because my cousin was getting married that day. And I'll never forget. It was a Friday. And my dad went to pick me up just from school. And I knew that everybody was at my house because everybody was getting ready for the wedding. And I remember my dad, I got in the car and he said, I have some really bad news to give to you. And mm. I was like, what? I was thinking something happened with the wedding, right? At, you know, and um, he's like, Selena died. And the next day was April 1st. And I was like, that is the worst April Fool's joke you could ever like say. And he's like, no, I'm serious. And he turned on the radio and Yolanda was, you know, held up in her truck. They were giving updates about all of that. They were playing all the Selena music. And I just remember getting home, like the drive home, uh, and my parents still live in that home, was the longest drive home ever. And I remember getting there, and the bride, my cousin, was there, and she refused to get ready. She was sobbing. Everybody was just sobbing. And she kept saying, I'm not going to get married. We need to just drive to Corpus. Everybody, need, we need to go to Corpus. Wow. And I'm like, yes, we need to go to Corpus. And um, so I remember that... Uh, we ended up, my cousin went and got married and she was like the saddest bride. I mean, that mm. was probably the saddest Can wedding I've ever imagine? been to in my wow. life. And then it starts raining. And no, then, oh you know, wow. it's like, it was so surreal. I, I just remember as a mm. kid, I even remember the dress I was wearing. My hair was half up, half down in curls. I was wearing a pink lace dress. You know, I remember every detail. I remember that at the wedding, I told my mom, I want to sing a Selena song because I, I do sing and um, I've always liked, liked to sing, but I always used to just sing by myself in my room or in the shower. I never, ever sang in front of anybody. And that day I felt like I just needed to pay tribute to her 
and sing. So I remember they, you know, back then cassette player, they put a Selena song on and I sang with, with two of my cousins. I was holding their hands cause I was so nervous. And two of my cousins were standing next to me and there's a picture of me where I'm singing for the very first time yeah. and I'm holding my cousin's hands cause I'm shaking and everyone's sobbing and crying and not because I'm singing so great, but because I mean, it, it literally, it was like six hours prior. It had just finished. Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, the whole wedding, someone had the radio on just to hear. And I remember when she finally, when Yolanda finally got out of the truck, like by this point, you know, everybody's drunk, right? And everybody's cheering and hollering because mm. she had finally surrendered. Mm. I mean, and that was the wedding. Yeah. That was the wedding. Wow. And, and I remember wow. that like it was yesterday. Wow, crazy, man. So, wow, it, I, mean, I mean, it was huge. You know, I wasn't just some little girl that showed up to audition for a Selena movie. I was a huge fan. And our our family was a huge Selena fan. She loved the Rio Grande Valley. She was always down here. I remember a real fest. She would yeah. always come down. Mm -hmm. You know, so she was very much, I mean. You they know, loved her. And yeah. the Raza just, you know, everybody just. Still do it's, yeah yeah it's 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 crazy yeah. even today when you go to uh stripes or circle k or whatever it's called stripes and you see selena like mm -hmm. wow it's still today you can mm -hmm. still get a cup and they sell and she's it's relevant you know she's still relevant. that's how big yeah. of an impact she had yeah. Yeah. on sure. the industry and, she, and, and our she's culture influenced so many of these pop artists like i mean let's look at beyonce let's look at Nicki mm -hmm. minaj let's look at rihanna i mean bad but how many of these major artists right now do you not ever see rocking a Selena shirt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, she has influenced generations and she will continue to influence generations yep. because she was that uh, barrier breaker. She totally, I mean, let's be real, prior to her, I mean, the, the Hispanic community was not really known. Mm -hmm. You know, she totally opened the doors for, for it to be cool to be a Latino entertainer. Mm -hmm. You know, then we started getting the Salma Hayek's and then we started getting all these, yeah. you know, Penelope Sofia Cruz. Vergara's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but prior to that, like, let's really look and think. Prior to that, was there any of that? Unless you're watching like, you know, the telenovelas, you, yeah. you weren't seeing any Hispanics mm -hmm. over on this side yeah. in movies. Wow. And, and I, I was mean? so grateful for the line in the movie where uh, Edward James Olmos says how hard it is to be Mexican-American because that's such a very specific line because the Mexicans, they think, oh, you're too American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Americans think, oh, well, you're a Mexican. Yeah. And like, mm -hmm. you can't, you, you don't there win. No balance. Uh -huh. There's yeah. no balance. And yeah. when he said that, I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. says it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, things are changing nowadays. You know, they I mean. so are. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have a favorite clip because uh, when I went to go see the movie, we had a radio remote and, and it was a, a private screening. We gave away tickets to see the movie for the very first time before anybody else could. And I remember being in the theater and seeing Becky and uh, the part that really blew me away is coming up in just a little bit. But we want to let everybody know, and this is brought to you by Joe's Master Service, probably serving mm -hmm. the, uh, Edin the local Edinburgh area for over 50 years joe is going to take care of your vehicle you need a uh, oil change you need your ac fix you need some freon you need tires you need rotation you need a sticker for your uh, you know uh, your 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 car you need a u-haul joe has it all he does it all and he's one of the guys that you actually go and you speak with because he's always there he's the one that handles everything joe brotherhood he knows his uh his business man and he knows that you need a good car and a, a gas efficient car as well if your car's not running well it's going to waste more gas than it has to and it costs a lot of money nowadays to gas up your car give him a call 956-383-1882 is his number right here in the city of edinburgh or if you want to come in from another town he's more than happy to uh, more than welcome you're more than welcome to come by and he's more than happy to help you joesmaster.com that's him and his 80 82 year old dad who yeah. still yeah. works there yeah. with it man yeah. brotherhood thank you so much he's on the chat zone right now Salud by Brotherhood. And by the way, um, he's uh, sponsoring the events calendar. We're going to do an events calendar, ladies and gentlemen. We've, we've got some really great things happening, and we're going to be part of some awesome events. First off, it's going to be happening next Friday, a week from this Friday, El Grupo Metal. Yeah! And, yeah. Uh, you know, Chris, Chris, Chris was here, and uh, we've already talked with, uh, with uh, Becky Lee, and uh, we're going to have a couple of chairs for them as well, for her and her husband, because... 
her husband really wants to meet Chris. So we're yeah. going to make that happen for you, okay? <laughs> and uh, who knows, we might have a, a couple of chairs to give away like we did with the Aaron yeah. Lewis that they yes. got to sit at our yeah, table. They can sit with so us. stick around. I'll be talking with the promoter tonight, and we'll be uh, you know making the deal for that, okay? So that's how, and Sean Mecca, who's been on the show as well, will be performing, and I can't wait to see yes, that. Yes, he is. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Also, uh, we will be part of Solidos Freedom Fest July 2nd, and here is the commercial for you. Rio Grande City Freedom Fest, Saturday, July 2nd, at the Basilio Villarreal Park, with T-ball and softball tournament, a barbecue cook-off, food and craft vendors, free kitty rides, with a massive fireworks show, with Grupo Signo, with special guest Chris Perez, Rio Grande's very own Grupo Solido, Latin Vibe, y Grupo Inevitable, Rio Grande City Freedom Fest, Saturday, July 2nd. Bring the whole family, free for all ages. Rio Grande City's gonna hit it out of the ballpark. Rio Grande City Freedom Fest! Hi, Jesse. Jesse Turner. I was tripping out with that. Yeah, so we're going to take cameras as well. We have a professional camera videographer, uh, Sergio Films, Sergio uh, Garcia, Garcia Films, Films, and he's uh, an Emmy Award winner. So he's going to be there with the microphones, and we're going to be conducting some interviews, and we're going to be talking to fans. We're also going to do that next week at uh, the Metal Show. We're going to yes. do it July 2nd. And this is just hot off the press, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. We're, <laughs> last night was a, a, a meeting, a, a city commission meeting in Mercedes, mm -hmm. and everything's been approved for the first annual Elida Fest. And we can't wait to be part of this amazing event. It is happening on July 30th. And uh, we want to uh, get everybody involved in it. It's in Mercedes. And it'll be fantastic. It's uh, launching a music scholarship program to help students acquire instruments and an academic scholarship to help pay for their educational costs, such as tuition, booths, and uh and fees, it's a way to give back to the, my community and the RGV because the community has given so much to me. That's what Elida says. Mm -hmm. The city of Mercedes proclaimed November 1st, 2005 as Elida Reina de la Reina de la Valle Magico. So on the 30th of July, uh, we will be there as well. And Elida and her husband Lalo will be here, we'll be here. on the show at the first week of July. Yes. So we can't wait for that. So we're being part of uh, all these events, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to get to meet the hashtag PBT crew, we will be there, and uh, we will have our little tent as well and have T-shirts and all that kind of stuff, okay? So that is the events calendar, and thank you so much. Speaking of T-shirts, can I say thank you to Jesse Turner for sending us a picture? He's Hello. wearing the AOT. I know. Thank you, Jesse. Wow, man. So you can get our shirts uh, with a description. We've been mailing out some shirts. We still have a few Asusta Me One Time and some other shirts as well. So go to the description below. It's PVT merchandise that you can uh, get mailed straight to your door. But like I said, if you're at the festivals, we're going to put up a little tent. We'll have some t-shirts so you can just buy them there and it'll be a lot faster. I mean, but can you put Jesse again? I will. Can you yeah, put Jesse again? You only put it for again? a few seconds. Oh, blue eyes. Wait, 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 wait. Those puppy eyes. Yeah. 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 The filter, the filter. Yeah. 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 Jesse. So parece, que, parece que está en ecstasy el vato. Yeah. 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 Thank you, all, Jesse. Yeah, man. So thank you so much. Now, uh, let me see that clip uh, that, uh, let's see if we can put it up. The one that was, that sh totally blew me away as soon as it happened. That I realized, wow, that's Becky Lee Meza. All those people applauding. I mean, come on, Susie. What did you feel? I mean, what did you think? It was so cool. I mean, I've never seen so many people smile before. They're so exciting. It was. Like, when I'm up on stage, I feel like, like I can, I can be anything I want to be.
Oh my god. I want to cry. <laughs> she makes it so believable. I know. Oh man. I'm trying not to cry. I was actually on that roof. I had to climb up there, but then when we filmed those close-ups, they made a mock roof on the street. So the, the shingles were on the floor, on the street. Yes, yeah. And so they built like a little, you know, and we actually, that night, I did not go in to film until six in the evening. And we did not stop filming that scene until four in the morning. So oh, I, got, wow. I got the next oh, day wow. off. Wow. Uh, I was so tired. And my legs were asleep from being squatted down oh on that fake roof goodness. for like six hours. Was that the most difficult uh, shoot yes. that, for the whole that movie? That was the most difficult scene to shoot, for sure. For me. Mm -hmm. For me. When I saw that, in the, yeah, when I saw that in the theater, I was like, I was just like, it really hit me. And yeah. uh, realizing that it was about Selena and that you, who we knew and was from here from South Texas, was playing that part. Her. So yeah. a lot of people also don't know this right right now that you're saying this. And I don't know if you remember this. I used to sing. I was the opening act for Joe Lopez and Grupo Mas oh, right really? after Selena uh, passed away. I think it was even before. Uh, no, it was after after we filmed the Selena movie. Um, my mom was a huge fan, my parents. And um, I got to, to meet them and, and we just became really, really close with the Lopez family. And anytime they had performances here in the Rio Grande Valley, I would open up while they well, while the crew was setting up the uh, all the instruments. Mm -hmm. So I got to open up for him at the island when when it was Jeremiah's or what was that? Oh, yeah. uh, oh my gosh, what was yeah. that place called? It was a slide or something. Yes, like Jeremiah's. I opened up uh, here at the Villarreal. I opened up for him a couple times. I opened up. Uh, I mean, oh my gosh, I remember. He, Is there any video of that? I don't even know if there's Golly. video. The SPI Convention Center, I opened up for him. Anytime they had performances down here in the Valley, I would open up and I would do um, Selena songs or, or whatever. I would just, you know, kill time while, while mm -hmm. the, the crew was getting everything set up. Yeah. Wow. If anybody has that on VHS, yeah. put I it up know. on YouTube, dude. Please yeah. let us know. Yeah, we'll put yeah. it up. <laughs> Just give it, it to it us. Was, yeah. It was fun. So yeah. I love that but, nostalgia, all that stuff, you know, that that we don't get to that that just went down the memory hole because mm -hmm. there's no recordings of it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's there's just crazy. memories and thoughts. I was going and... somewhere with that. I don't remember why I brought that. <laughs> well, I know there was a point. <laughs> well, we said it was you were sitting on the roof, your legs were asleep. Yeah, that was the most part. difficult yeah. shoot. Part. You mm -hmm. finished at 4 a.m. You finished yeah. at 4 a.m. So you got the next day off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. See, we, we listening. <laughs> oh, my God. We're listening. I was well, going, how many times do I do that a day? Well, all the time. our brain farts here are <laughs> contagious as well, because I get yeah. plenty of those. Yeah, so. I know there was a point. Now. <laughs> It'll get to you when you're driving home. Well, I, maybe the point yeah. will be in our chat zone, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to Zach. Uh, Zach. 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 Oh, What's that? Zach. Zach. Zach Morris. Hi, everybody. I'm Zach here. <laughs> <laughs> do it to again. Different do it. To different characters. Do it again. Hi, everybody. I'm Zach here. <laughs> no, but... Um, oh, hold oh, on. God. I got I to gotta do the sponsor. <laughs> I got to say the sponsor. <laughs> hey. Slow down. It's because I'm on the green head stuff That's right now. Exactly man. Right. You and I both. Yeah, the green head. They offer a natural alternative for stress and pain with various <laughs> CBD infused lotions, oils, edibles, gummies, and even inhalants to combat and recuperate the body and mind. If you're all stressed out with what's going on with gas price, all that stuff, this stuff that they got, they'll help you relax and chill out a bit, man, because that's bad for you having all that stress. They've got amazing name brand bongs, like the one we've got right here from uh, Cheech and Chong. Right here. This is a beautiful, amazing product. Look at Their this. detoxes help purge out all the toxins that our body absorbs throughout the day, full body and mental relaxation. Veterans are always welcome, and they always have special discounts. They have the most knowledgeable staff in the industry. Hector, Louie, and Javi, you need to go by or just give them a call if you have any questions. They <laughs> answer 956-666-9088 in FAR. And in Mission, it's 956-591-0114. Check them out on Instagram and Facebook. Also, the Green Hit is a perfect place for relaxing the mind and spirit in an all-natural way. Now, we're going to be putting the um, their, their, all their information information in the description where you just click on it and you go to their social media platforms and we encourage you to 
uh, you know, like their pages and follow them because because of them, we're able to do what we're doing and we do what we do for you, the fans uh, that uh, follow us and support us. So thank you so much. And if you want to be a sponsor or have your business or product on our show, <laughs> just text us 956-641-3241. We have four available slots, okay? Four available slots. Once those four available slots are gone, we're done. It's too much. And they're for Tuesdays and Thursdays, okay? Because Wednesdays, as you can see, we already have a pretty good amount of <laughs> sponsorships and uh, supporters as well. So, Jax, what do we got? Not Zach, Jax. Jax what the hell did I say, Zach? What, what's been you going know, on with me? It might be the 80s shirt. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Zach, Zach Morris. They yeah. said yeah. I look like yeah. Zach Morris. Yeah. Yeah. by the bell. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. The, the shirt really fits that era. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. It does. Um, but yeah, uh, also speaking of nicknames, they have a nickname for Jesse Turner now. What Should I say it? it? Is that they, they, they're saying it's Jesse Neta Turner. Neta. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jesse was just mentioning that when he called me yeah, today. today. When I yes. said Neta. 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 We should make a meme and just share it on social media. But anyway. Or a t shirt with him. A, sh a shirt for sure. It says Neta. <laughs> No, but for sure, uh, we got like a, a couple shout outs and we do have a couple questions too. Uh, shout out to Alejandra Valdez from Round Rock, Texas. George Perez says he says hi from Oklahoma City hi. and hello uh, to all his family. Uh, Tejano Boy uh, checking in from Mansfield, Texas. Uh, Robert Ibarra checking in from Big Spring, Texas. And Samuel Martinez has a question. So we're going to dig right into that. And the question is, do you make any royalties from the movie? Mm. I do. Really? Yeah, I wow, do. That's wow. awesome. And every time you turn the TV on, it's on it's somewhere, on. right? Yes. Yeah. Make well, sure you watch how it. How does that work? What kind of a deal was that? Like, So it's like even Macaulay Culkin. He still makes royalties every time mm -hmm. they show Home Alone. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things that's kind of built in. In fact, all actors, anytime the movie is played, you get lifelong royalties. And what wow. are we looking at? Uh, monthly, quarterly? Uh, quarterly. Quarter, so you get a yeah. check every three months? Every three months. And uh, what are we looking at uh, if, if, if it's okay for us? It's not, with, it's not much anymore. It's maybe like a you know $1,000 if that. What was the peak? The peak was uh, obviously right after the Selena movie came out. And I think I could be so wrong. But I want to say I think we received one that was like $21,000. Wow. Yeah. That, that must have been right wow. after like when yes. movie theaters... Mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I think it was that first year right afterwards. But a lot of people, again, don't, you know, they, they see all this money and say, oh, you know, what happened? Her parents or she spent it all, whatever. Okay, so my my parents had to literally stop working and uproot their lives to go with me for a full year or two years mm -hmm. to travel. So when you, you know, yes, it, it supported our family, mm -hmm. you know. Oh. I mean, it and. You're going all over the United States. Yeah. After after we filmed the movie, uh, we did what we called rollout premieres. And I was in Chicago, Miami, California. I mean, they had me at all the smaller premieres, Dallas, you know, Houston. But I would get off one plane and I would get on another. Like, I didn't even know what time zone I was in. I didn't even know what city or state I was in. I mean, it was just constant promotion for the movie mm. right after it came out. Yeah. And so, yeah, my my family had to literally, everybody, you know, my mom and dad weren't going to let me go on my own. Yeah. I was so little. Yeah. So they stopped working and that supported our family for a couple of years. Yeah. You and, know? and the promotions, you did a lot of them with J-Lo, is that right? Or I is did, that incorrect? I think I did uh, just one, just the Los Angeles premiere because they had her all over the yeah. place too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we were trying to cover a bunch of ground. And I'm sure know? she was, uh, you know, working in other projects she as well. Was so she was definitely doing other projects. Yeah. In fact, when she started f filming Selena, I want to say she had just wrapped up Jack. Mm -hmm. with uh robin williams yeah and i think she had also done it uh, around that time i think she had done anaconda anaconda yeah. um so like she was all money over train i think was one money of the train movies was, yeah. yes yeah. um yeah so, so she you was, really didn't interact to, with her too much actually during the filming yes because we would have these big old casting dinners and parties and stuff where we would kind of regroup, everybody get together, you know, and we'd have dinners and stuff like that. And, and she was there. Um, I remember when, when I first got picked, they were going to do the huge press conference in Los Angeles. 
And the night before the press conference, uh, we all went to go eat. The cast and the crew went to go eat at a restaurant in Beverly Hills. And she was there and I got to sit next to her. And then one time when we first all got together, so that was like before the the whole announcement of who was going to play the roles of Selena. Then when we all met to start filming, uh, we all got together like the first night or the second night, cast and crew only. Um, and we ate at a Mexican restaurant and again, had never been around any of this stuff. And I was nine. And so I remember we were at a Mexican restaurant and I was sitting right next to her and she saw that I was struggling reading the Mexican menu. Cause first of all, the Mexican food in San Antonio is not the same as the one down here. <laughs> right. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't know sure. what I was ordering. And so she's like, well, what do you normally eat? She looked over and I was like, I don't know, like enchiladas, like do they have enchiladas? And she's like, yeah, she's like, don't worry. I'll order for you when the wait waitress comes. And so I'll, like, I'll never forget that, you know, she, mm -hmm. and she was really young when she filmed Selena. She was in her early 20s, mm -hmm. you know, so she I mean, she was super cool and down to earth, you know. We've got some pictures. Uh, let's we go do. through the pictures so you I can tell us about gonna it. I was just going to say, we have some so really nice pictures. There's that's one. The, that's uh, the time. Is that, that the restaurant the right yeah. there? Yeah. Wow. And you can't see, but that hat over there, that's Suzette. Oh, wow. Wow, man. That's an awesome picture. How about Look at you. <laughs> And then there's, uh, is that, that's a press conference? That's or is a press conference okay. in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. And of course, since we were filming in San Antonio, it was a press conference saying that we were going to be, you know, the city of San Antonio, the mayor, all those people got together and said, there's going to be the Selena movie filming here. And so we did a press conference just to kind of let everybody know that we were in town. How about this one? That was when we filmed that one scene where it transitions from Selena being little to Selena, that that scene where she's wearing the denim jacket and then she busts out in the bustier. Oh, yeah, that scene, the yeah. transition scene. Mm -hmm. uh, we filmed that that day. Is that like the artist trailers? Yes. Is that, is that yours? Like, yeah. you going were you starstruck with J-Lo? They're asking in the chat zone if you were starstruck with her. No, because again, I didn't know who she was. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so. She I was mean, nine years old, dude. I she was, was watching nine. cartoons. I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, what's yeah. the next picture, babe? Who's that? That's Mario Lopez yeah, at the Latino Lab. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Say by the bell again. That's Mario Lopez at the Latino Laugh Festival. And it looks like you don't you don't want him to kiss you or something or what like I was just <laughs> I was nine. <laughs> Oh, I, we like to call him El Dimples de Oro porque yeah. tiene los dimples de bonito. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Selena's <laughs> mom, yeah, Marcela. Marcela, yes. yeah. Wow, that's an awesome picture. And uh, was where was this taken at? That was outside of the house where we filmed. That was supposed to be Lake Jackson. Uh -huh. And those were the, those were the first couple of days of filming. Actually, when filming got kicked off. Your tennies, your tennies. Look at those. <laughs> All right. What other people look like? You're ready to do the washing machine, right? There. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hold on. Have a they really want to see you do it in, in the chat zone. If you, if you, if you want to. What is this uh, picture? What is that picture right there? That picture was when we were filming the scene in Harlingen where she gets booed off of the stage. Oh, it was in Harlingen. Well, no, we filmed that in uh, Poteet, Texas. Okay, actually. but it's supposed to but be it's Harlingen. Supposed to be Harlingen, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, is that guy with the cowboy hat? Is that? It looks he like was Raulito. The announcer. Okay, he's the announcer. <laughs> All right. We have a good question in the chat zone. Just real quick, real quick. Um, what do you think about the Selena series, the new Selena series? Oh my gosh. Go ahead. Okay. You, you I'm going to be so real. Yes. Go for it. Yes. I watched about five minutes of it, and then I turned it off, and several reasons. One, because uh, the actress that played Selena was, uh, what's her name from The Walking Dead? So I just could not get that out of my head. <laughs> yeah. She was what's-her-face from The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a lot of people don't understand that when we made the Selena movie, we started filming the movie one year after her death, and the movie was released in 1997. Selena passed away in 1995. The wounds were still very, very fresh when we had to film the movie uh -huh. for everybody. The composure that we had to keep while filming some of these scenes and the emotions that a lot of us felt during the filming of the movie, because a lot of us were still trying to process that the Queen of Tejano music is no longer with us. We there were times when we would be filming these scenes and then seeing the Quintanillas out out there, you know, filming a movie portraying her life for the very first time was so hard. The chemistry, the emotion, the sediment, everything I don't think can ever be recreated. Uh -huh. Ever. 
ever. I mean, we had literally just lost. It's like someone filming a movie about the Twin Towers in 2002, right after it happens, yeah. and then trying to recreate it that 20 years later. The emotion, some of those kids aren't even old enough to remember mm -hmm. yeah. what happened at that time and feel the emotion that happened in 1995. You know what I mean? I totally agree with you. In you know, way. that's just kind of my take. I'm not knocking the series down in any way, shape, or form. If people enjoyed it, that's great. They did highlight some things. Obviously, the Quintanilla, Suzette, they had a lot to do with the series, and they put a lot of personal things out there. Um, but my opinion is that you cannot duplicate or replicate the chemistry the emotion that it took to film the selena movie versus the series mm -hmm. 20 something years later yeah the, the wounds were still really really fresh in 1996 when we filmed that movie yeah, yeah. um it, it just that's my personal opinion and you know i i just i didn't want to watch it um but i think it's I, I listen there's a lot of kids now that she passed away 20 something years ago okay she was 23 years old. She just, she would have been 51 this past April. Um, so I think it's important that future generations know who she is. And if it's through a Netflix series, that's great. Um, but I think for the generation that was little and that was around right when it happened, and, and I've spoken to a lot of people that have said the movie had, it came out right after she passed. So like for them, what was most memorable was the movie uh -huh. not yes. the series who was uh who asked that question that's a good question uh that was from i loud 14 oh, thank yeah, you really. so much for that question do we have one, any more one loud 14 i'm sorry one any more uh pictures babe oh pictures Give yeah me one second. which ones uh, we have a couple more i think let me see Okay, that's. I think I know who that is. That is Julie. Yes. That's Miss Julie. And she was actually Selena's uh, seamstress. Yep. She would sew all of Selena's costumes. She did all of Johnny Canales' jacket. She did all of La Sombra. Did Som she really? She did La Sombra's. Oh my gosh. Well, stuff. she was in She's charge amazing. of wardrobe on set. Mm -hmm. So she had to re sew and recreate all of Selena's costumes because, if I'm not mistaken, they did not use any of the originals mm. miss julie had to recreate all of selena's costumes yeah wow. she was an amazing that's, person that's what awesome. a super because, nice person believe this or not jlo's booty and waist was her booty was smaller than selena's and her waist was bigger yep oh. I believe so it. believe this or not <laughs> yeah. she did not fit into selena's original costumes wow. so miss julie had to recreate and then you know the j-lo's wow. booty is you know very recognized for being big so you can well, only she's imagine. lucky selena isn't around because yeah and yeah. Uh, selena had a wonderful figure yes um all right and what other picture do we got there let me see i know uh, that's uh corpus christi is that that's corpus that's right before we filmed uh this the scene where the washing machine happens but um, this scene, I don't think made it into the movie. Or I don't think so. But this is when they're driving into Corpus Christi from Lake Jackson. Okay. And so, What yeah. other pictures there? Do we have any more left? Mm -hmm. That is Gordo La Flaca? Is that yes, that lady? that is. Okay. Miss Lily. So that was the, uh, all of us child actors went and did the Sabado Gigante show with Don Francisco. Wow. And wow. I grew up watching... Sábado Gigante with my grandparents. So <laughs> when I saw her, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so she yes. did starstruck you. Oh, my yeah, gosh. She did, yes, yeah. she did. Because I grew up. What Hispanic child did not grow up yeah. watching Sábado Gigante? Right. I mean, what about Don Francisco when you saw Don Francisco? Oh, him too. He's like, oh, my gosh, a larger than life. It would be like meeting Johnny Carson or Dave uh -huh, Letterman. Yeah, like, you know yeah. what I mean? For for me. and uh, Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, wow. oh, my gosh. Yes. What, do we have any more picks, babe? Um, we have a few of her family. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Uh -oh. I want to meet. What I, I want to meet her family. All oh, right. Okay, so we have four children. The one with the white uh, cap is Evan. That's our oldest. He's seventeen. The one in the red graduation uh, deal. He just got promoted to be a freshman. That's Dax Michael. He's fourteen. And then that handsome little one that looks like me when I was little. That's Gunner Daniel. He's 12. And then that is our princess, Shyla Joe. Mm, the one that runs the show, huh? She definitely does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We have a beautiful family. Thank what a beautiful you. family. We have, awesome. we have one more. Yeah, oh, that is awesome. 
Oh, what's <laughs> wow. going on there? The washing oh machine? The washing machine. <laughs> we just love to have fun. That's what we do. I mean, I'm obviously no longer an actress. I work. I'm a working mom. Uh, we have four children. We're very much involved in our children's lives. And we love to stop and, and just spend time with each other, our family and our kids. And we're always down for spontaneous trips to the island. Um, you know, we just enjoy life. We live life and we enjoy our beach. And, and so we, we just always, always make time for our kiddos. And we enjoy that you came to visit us. Thank you so and much for having me. This was so much fun. I, I really, I, I was excited in the salon all day talking about it to our clients. <laughs> um, you know, I, I grew up listening to you, Rock, and, mm -hmm. and anything. Someone asked me the other day, why don't you do TV shows or appearances? And I'm like, I don't like to be on TV. I don't like to be transparent, really, with people. Um, I don't like to share intimate parts of my life, you know. Um, but when Rock asks, you say yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, That's for awesome. Sure. That's nice. You know, yeah. Becky, awesome. uh, I was blessed that he asked me to, to work with him. And we've interviewed uh, Kurt Angle and uh, lots of people but this is my favorite oh yeah. i appreciate you so much yeah. and you know what jesse from signo if you're listening i would totally do a duet with you so i'm calling you out bro oh. I, anyone that's ever asked if i would sing i probably I, I wouldn't but i would definitely i've, I've watched jesse grow up in this industry as well um, he's a little bit older than I am, but, you know, I saw him in the very beginning when he started. And I'm so happy and proud of all his accomplishments and um, everything that he's overcame. He's a very strong man. Um, you know, I, I follow him a lot in his story with his son and, and prayers to you, brother, all the time. Um, but I'm just so proud of how he can just get up after everything that gets thrown at him and i'm just extremely and genuinely happy and proud of him and be careful because uh he's gonna take you up on that offer oh my God. He, will. he will he will he will he he'll set it. something up and you totally <laughs> answered just, the, the chat the chat zone question i had it written down here we yes. were gonna ask you that that about if you would do a collab with jesse turner and you just answered wow. that question there you go. So, All that's right. awesome. that was totally god Bro. Yeah. yeah and when that happens it's you can like, go back and it's there oh my <laughs> gosh when it does happen which oh, I wow. probably think it will. It will. Uh, it happened. Uh, it was born on hashtag, hashtag PBT. Yeah. Wow, yeah. is that My crazy? PBT yeah. Network. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, we appreciate you and uh, I appreciate y'all. Thank and you so thank much. Thank you for uh, you know coming down to the show and sure. you know and uh, whatever you need from us, we're here for you 110. You and know? the same goes to y'all. If y'all ever, if you need a retouch on that color, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. You know, for we'll sure. have to do a, a video. A video. We'll do a video. Yes. My, wife, sure. my wife wants me to cut my long hair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, David oh wants my. to color his. <laughs> yeah. Before we brain. leave, uh, we should all exit with doing the, <laughs> the washing machine because washing they really they're you really asking what? for it on the chat zone. They really really want it. We'll, what we'll and do we is, give them what they want. We give our fans what they want. We'll here. do it in the lobby and we'll put it on our TikTok. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. Right. So y'all need to go to the TikTok with some filters and uh, special yeah. effects to yeah. make yeah. you look skinnier <laughs> and all that stuff. This is what happens when you have four kids and you do not do. You look great. You look amazing. You know, JLo's 51, I'm 36, but, you know, she's got a lot of people helping her stay that pretty. You, That's another question they had. They had a question <laughs> about your age, too. I'm 36 years old. I'll be 37 this October. That's chavalona. Dale. Como decimos aquí en el Dali, estás polluela. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. It's been an incredible week so far. Last night we had Chris Perez Carlito, and tonight we had Becky Lee Meza. And we appreciate you uh, for coming over with your husband and uh, spending some time with us. And I hope we can do it again. Yes, for right? sure. We'll do it again. Thank you, Becky. We'll see what's up. Thank and ladies you. and gentlemen, don't forget, tomorrow night we have another show. If you want to be part of that show with your business or product, you text us. 956-641-3241 is the number. Go to our TikTok as well. And it's Rock and Roll James 2020. And you can see us on Instagram as well. As a matter of fact, our neighbor uh, was like, I saw it on Instagram. I follow you all. So at, at hashtag PVT is our Instagram. And we're always trying to put some stuff up and keeping uh, keep busy on that. Okay. So uh, tomorrow night we have, uh, I am a big fan. I'm going to be too. doing that Wayne's World thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to be doing it. 
we have a guy that has a ranch in uh, in Sullivan okay. City. It's called Rancho La Reserva, and he has a YouTube channel, and he does a lot of ranch stuff, and he cooks armadillo and rattlesnake, and he did a little video to promote the show for tomorrow. I'll put it on, babe, so we can uh, show it. El primo Cheo, vámonos, Reza. Yo quería saludarlo, Raza, y darle la noticia de que gracias a todos ustedes y gracias a... Uh, pues realmente todos ustedes vean que han ido creciendo un poco el canal no somos muchos como dice la raza dice pero somos pocos pero de calidad así que la noticia es raza que vamos a estar en el, uno de los mejores shows de aquí del valle de texas es el, el show de rock and roll james al cual jamás me jamás me pasó por la mente que me fuera a pasar esto este, vamos a estar uh, en vivo en vivo con el rock and roll james raza Va a ser este jueves a las 8 de la noche, raza. El canal se llama My PBT Network. Ahí se los voy a dejar en la suscripción, raza. Ahí se los voy a dejar ahí. Por si quieren conectar este jueves a las 8 de la noche, vamos a estar en vivo. Este, por si nos gustan acompañar, raza. I can't wait because we're. we're, we're, we're <laughs> Armadillo? I was. Well, my wife's saying not to say <laughs> what like we're going to do tomorrow. No, you can't say. But can't we have say. a very it's a special it's a show. Surprise for Cheo. For Cheo tomorrow because, man, we're big fans. And everybody I turn on. I turned their, their, his channel on to, they like, they text me, April Tauru told I became an instant fan as soon as you told me. Yeah. How, who fan. doesn't like barbecue? Yeah. I mean, Besides you know. that, he's doing, it's ranch life. It's yeah. out, outdoors. And, and when I watch it, I'm at home. If, if the day has been like, be, civilization can really, you know, yeah. being in town with all the cars and everything, and then you go home and you watch his channel, and you're out in a ranch, dude. It's you know what I mean? And it's, like, it's informative. Yeah, and it's informative. It's educational. It's cultural. It's just an amazing channel las aventuras el primo cheo why don't you go there and check out some of his stuff so that way when you see the show tomorrow you will uh you know what you're getting into okay so thank you so much ladies and gentlemen everybody wave at the cameras because we're gone bye yeah.